Hi, Tantric Travelers. Welcome to your Pisces birthday party. Happy birthday, little fishies. I'm just swinging my fishnet here. <laughs> I am not at the beach. I am up in the beautiful earthly forest. And I've been thinking about Pisces all morning and celebrating your birthday season Pisces with our Pisces lunar and solar cycle uh, well underway. You might hear um, a speaker in the background they're having a party. It seems to be going on for days and days in this little village that I live outside of right now. And it's been a lot of fun, a lot of amazing music, a lot of dancing, a lot of drinking, a lot of socializing. And that is pretty much what Pisces season sometimes feels like for us. So I'm finely tuned to the Pisces energy. And besides that, I also have Venus in Pisces, which Although Pisces is ruled by Neptune, that beautiful marine outer planet, Venus, having previously been, we think, a moon of Neptune, Venus is um, the goddess arising out of the, the beautiful shell from the sea, and she is also, the planet Venus is also exalted in Pisces. So when Venus is in the house of Pisces, um, it is exalted. And I believe Venus is in Pisces right now, as well as Neptune. So this year, this solar cycle, with these amazingly powerful planets and, and trines that involve the house of Pisces and its ruling planet Neptune, the god of the sea, with all of these um, beautiful configurations, Pisces is a particularly pleasant, joyful, social, peaceful, celebratory season this year. And I'm very happy to be celebrating it with you, my dear Piscean friends. And you, you can find out if you weren't born in the Pisces season, which is from, you know, the last week of February or so up until about the, the 21st of March, the equinox. Um, if, you, if you don't have your sun in Pisces, then look at your lunar position and also look at where the planet Venus is and where the planet Neptune are in your own birth chart. And that will give you a little bit of insight, possibly, into how this Pisces season could be resonating for you and affecting you. So all things Piscean, we're going to discuss for a minute, and then I'm going to offer you beautiful tantric travelers as I swing in my suspended state, <laughs> which is also Piscean because Pisces in the tarot rules the hanged man, and the hanged man is Odin hanging upside down from a tree. And if you know the Pisces symbol, it's the two fish kind of in the yin-yang position, um, creating this tension which, instead of pulling in opposite directions in a linear fashion, kind of um, magnetizes uh, the two fish to one another and creates a whirlpool kind of motion, the spiraling motion of the ever-expanding and contracting consciousness of our universe and Pisces is definitely um, amongst the most evolved the most evolved energies of human consciousness and influences of human consciousness um, and I am going to offer as a special birthday gift to you Pisceans and also to a special gift to celebrate this very very it's one of my favorite times of the year, this amazing season where we tap into the fifth dimensional energy of Venus and, you know, the like ninth dimensional energy of Neptune. We can do that through water, music, 
dancing, socializing, creating art, um, dreaming, sleeping, using our imagination, giving our linear rational minds a rest by indulging in a little bit of good old fashioned fantasia. So I am going to offer a beautiful Piscean pick a card reading to everyone and let me think about what the title to that might be. I think it, it's going to have something to do with fantasy, like like whose fantasy are you and what do they fantasize about you? I think we're gonna, we might just get a little bit of, you know, a little bit fishy. <laughs> But let me talk a little bit more about you beautiful Piscean Tantric Travelers. Um, so we're in this season of the springtime. So in the Northern Hemisphere, the springtime is about ice and snow turning into water and about the sap beginning to flow again through the tree. And actually trees, in addition to water itself, trees are also very Piscean. As I mentioned, the hanged man energy with Odin, who suspended himself voluntarily to gain the occult knowledge of the universe. So he suspended himself by the ankle upside down from a tree, um, and his eye was pecked out by a raven. And you know, that's kind of symbolizing the, the balanced, linear, um, rational way of thinking versus um, using, using our, our first eye, our pineal, pine, pineal apparatus, um, which is connected with trees, and it is connected with, with the patterns of light that we receive just as trees do when they go through their changing season, if they do change. Um, I'm just lighting some incense here, white sage, gift from some beautiful friends that just came to visit me. It was a wonderful surprise to have company. And you might be um, socializing with friends, especially old friends, and it might sort of feel like no time at all has passed. That's another Piscean trick, um, trick of the trade. Uh, Pisces rules boats, rules water, rules fishermen, rules fisher people. Um, we enjoy a lot of fish and seafood normally if, if we have that as part of our diets. We like to be in and near the water in Pisces season. And I spent some wonderful time with my friends who were visiting me here. Um, in this country that's now my home. I spent some wonderful time on the beach with them before we came up into the forest. So we got the, the ocean, we went whale watching and dolphin watching and mermaid watching. Shh, that's a secret. <laughs> and we swam and drank margaritas and ate an unbelievable quantity of fresh fish that we bought from the fishermen themselves and it was absolutely enchanted, just as you are, my dear Pisces Tantric Travelers. Um, so I was thinking about, you know, the Piscean energy is, is the twelfth house in the Western Zodiac, and there is a thirteenth house, which is the secret house of, you know, the healed healer. Um, I think it's Ophicus. It's called because we do we do actually participate in and receive the energy of 13 moons per year clearly um, and it's not 12 moons but the zodiac has a hidden house because we have not yet remembered or we haven't in this era remembered our full potential as human beings but Pisces is the, is the season where we reawaken to our star heritage and our soul heritage and the motivation of our soul really comes to the forefront especially in these exalted positions that we're experiencing right now in the astrological configurations of our our galaxy and yeah so Einstein was a Pisces and 
clearly with the theory of relativity, this was, you know, an immense contribution um, to the, the reawakening of the human mind to the true nature of reality, which is not linear, um, but more of the spiraling kind of whirl whirlpooling um, tension between expansion and contraction that we experience as as consciousness here in this universe and the potential for perceiving time in so many different ways and that can be through you know through the different sensory apparat apparatuses that we as different beings possess for instance the difference between being a tree and being a bird um, you know, trees in, in the fullest sense of the Piscean energy as above so below. Trees have that root system that generally matches the expanse and the, the height matches the depth. So if it's a giant oak tree with a very lush sort of full foliage, then you, you can guarantee that underneath the surface of the soil there is an equally lush foliage root system that supports and um, that feeds the tree, that nourishes the tree. And, you know, this relationship between the clouds and the air and the light above and the, the water and the soil and the darkness below um, really encapsulates to me, um, as I was thinking about it earlier today, really encapsulates to me the the natural law as above so below and the Piscean expression of that. So yeah, hmm, what else? You know, like the perception of the perception of reality and time if we think about it sometimes can really be much more like like swimming <laughs> than like walking or driving and I think that yeah that that you know has really had such a huge influence on human consciousness the fact that we can go from point A to point B in a somewhat linear fashion halfway around the world in such a small amount of time has led us in some ways into, into a, a belief in, in our power to technologize time, space, perception, fantasy, and to really, really look at things in only their physical and material uh, potential rather than the potential of fluidity you know the potential of of relativity and we have the queen of cups as i just cut the deck here so you can see she's pregnant in this portrayal this is a very beautiful piscean kind of energy you know she's got the nine months pregnant kind of look um, and she is, she's guided by deep intuition. And you can see the, you can see just down at the corner, at the foot of her throne, her feet are submerged in water and feet are ruled by Pisces, as well as breasts, I believe. That could be cancer, wait. As well as blood. And I think it could possibly be the male and female um, regenerative properties on a cellular level. So with the male, it would be sperm are ruled by Pisces and semen. And with the female, it would be eggs and the menstrual blood uh, that nourish uh, the, the child in the uterus, um, which are also ruled by Pisces. So yes, this beautiful Queen of Cups energy, she has the lotus floating by her feet, and the lotus is also a very Piscean energy, as it is known as being the very first plant that, that sprung from our watery planetary parent, Tierra Madre Marina Amor, Papa Suelo Rio Amor. 
And yes, the lotus, which gets its nourishment from deep below itself sometimes, you know, hundreds of feet sometimes in the muck that is, you know, hidden in the depths of the water and then gradually rises only to open in this incredibly intricate, beautiful, fragrant, floating flower. And that too could, could also remind us of how we are in many ways energetically like plants here on earth. And if Pisces rules the Tootsies, then the way that we connect ourselves to our planetary parent um, through our feet, our root chakra, and all of the chakras up to the lotus of the crown chakra and then beyond as we go to the soul star chakra, that is a very Piscean system. So the chakra system, the aura, the energetic system, particularly, you know, would be the root chakra, so through the bottom of your spine and even your feet into the ground, connecting with them, and also then, you know, being in sync with all of the chakras in complementary motion with the crown chakra, the thousand petaled lotus. So if you're doing work on your chakras, congratulations, I find it very helpful. And if you look in some of the videos, um, recent videos on my channel, there is one which is a, I think it's about a 20 minute meditation that goes through your thrones or seats of power, which are the nine chakras. So earth star chakra up to soul star chakra and do a clearing um, and reclaiming of each and every one of those nine chakras. Whew, channeling a lot for you beautiful fishies. Um, who else is a Pisces? Well, I have dated and been friends with many, many Pisces and I love them a lot. I think I relate to them because of my, my Venus being positioned in the house of Pisces but it's such a relief to be around them because they can be extremely authentic people when it's when Pisces is, is being expressed um, in their personality, but they're also so very, so very, very open and fluid and understanding and when they are operating to their highest potential, you know, non-judgmental, when they are operating to the reversal of that, the shadow side of the highest potential, that would turn into having very poor judgment or no judgment or not judging anything so that everything ends up being equal. And as we know on earth, that can sometimes be a tricky business if you're trying to live successfully within a society, if you're trying to live healthfully, um, you know, if you're trying to be a whole or healed person, then the perception, which is, you know, it may be true on a universal level, but here on Earth we do sometimes require acknowledgement of polarity extremes, and Pisceans can be very, very extreme. So they kind of fluctuate between the angelic and the demonic potential as well. And it's very interesting to hang out with with some Pisceans. To, to see a Piscean energy, person, entity, personality in balance is to really feel that beautiful tension between the two fish that creates, you know, this, this kind of magnetism and can really, can draw, it's a channel of abundance, can really create a channel of abundance which pulls in so much love, so much unconditional love from the universe. Um, Jesus Christ, although he was said to be born in the, in the time of Capricorn, so Yeshua Magdalena, who were tantric partners here on earth in many lifetimes, including the one that we know of most commonly, they together, um, their energetic configuration is the Piscean energy, so it's the Christed consciousness together. It wasn't one individual, it wasn't just a man, it was, you know, the masculine and the feminine, the dark and the light. Um, Mary Magdalena, who was said to be a prostitute, 
prosty being um, actually the prefix for anything priestly, so she was actually a priestess of the um, of you know the temple of Sekhmet or Venus, depending upon which which country you're looking at as its source. But she was a priestess of the Venusian energy. She was a priest priestess of the Piscean energy, the Christed consciousness, and that is the consciousness of unconditional love and the portal of these practitioners and Jesus was one of them, Yeshua was one of them, was actually the student of Mary Magdalene. Um, the portal created by tantric practitioners has always been that Piscean portal which is the proton electron magic um, that pulls in the energy you know that that ever-moving whirlpool energy created on the electromagnetic level with the you know the neutron as well um, and is the essence of our universe is the essence of our expanding universe and our contracting universe and if you are comfortable with water if you are comfortable with relativity if you are comfortable with nonlinear thinking, speaking, acting, communicating, living, if you're comfortable with nonlinear consciousness, then you will be quite comfortable in Pisces season. And if you're a tantric traveler, I'm guessing that you probably are. <laughs> but, but again, you will also see the negative aspects of Pisces and unconditional love presenting themselves because as every single being and every single entity and energy action word feeling is you know is part of our learning process um, as also ever expanding changing um, you know parts aspects of the one true divine central source of our universe as, as that, sometimes the actors and actions for unconditional love appear as the opposite of that. So it's kind of like a reversed card when it's pulled in a tarot reading, you know, it's in a healing position and upside down like the hanged man. And sometimes that upside down reflection, the other fish that we're interacting with um, in this electromagnetic equation Sometimes the upside, sometimes we are the upside down reflection for another individual or another consciousness, and sometimes it's the other way around, and that's how we learn about love. But it's not always comfortable. Pisces is not always comfortable, you know. And right now, this hammock that I only realized when I started the reading looks just like a fishnet. And I'm wearing my fishnets, too. <laughs> so, yeah, sometimes Jesus, Jesus was said to, you know, be able to, to produce many, many fish. And as well as being called and identified as a shepherd, he was also identified as a fisherman. And that, that consciousness, that, you know, that openness of just throwing your net into the ever-moving fluidity of the ocean and then going back and checking the next morning and seeing what swam in. You know, that kind of surrender, that kind of, um, that kind of unity with fluidity is, is a very useful way of being to us here on Earth, especially when we are in a very changeable um, state of expand consciousness expansion as as a species as humans are and yeah so think think about that or hold that somewhere in your consciousness that it's sometimes easier to you know to not put a line into a goldfish bowl and hope somebody bites the hook sometimes it's easier to throw out your nets and surrender to the currents and sometimes it's easier to swim into the net and surrender to the currents and be the fish as well as the fisherman 
So that's what uh, I'm channeling for you on this, your beautiful birthday, Pisces. So if you don't eat seafood, you probably, I think you'd probably, let's, let's talk about some more things that Pisceans love. A lot of Pisceans enjoy, you know, bubbles and drinks and bathing and the colors, uh, paint. A lot of Pisceans are amazing painters and very innovative painters. Um, a lot of Pisceans do have this beautiful, what I've always seen as an elven energy, you know, like big, enchanted, haunted eyes. Um, can also have, you know, the siren energy of, of the mermaid. Can also have the very peaceful, surrendered energy of the fisherman on the sea. Um, but yeah, in appearance, Pisceans kind of look elven to me a lot, like the pure Piscean or a Pis somebody with sun in Pisces and maybe something else in Pisces. Um, they like they like to change and experiment with their consciousness, so there can be a lot of substances involved. Um, they also really like the forest, I have found. Like to live um, at the parameters, you know, the fluid parameters of of places, not necessarily in the heart of a city. They really like to read, they like to escape. So they like movies and sometimes, you know, erotic erotic film. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna lie, Pisces, a lot of Pisces really like drinking and they're good at it. So <laughs> if you're not a Pisces, but you have Pisces friends, um, they're the people to hang out with. Music, of course. Um, philosophy and physics. I've met a lot of Pisceans who are interested in that. I've met a lot of Piscean surfers, it's no lie. Um, uh, what else? Who else? Who else? Who else? Definitely have a way with, you know, their hands. Can be very, can be very, I don't want to say good in bed, but can be very sexual in an enchanted kind of way. You know, like for a Piscean, definitely love and sex Sorry, um, could go together, but drugs and sex go better. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Okay, so let's do a little reading now. And for this reading, for all Tantric Travelers, I have chosen three shells. And I'm going to show them to you. So shell number one for the first pile. And the question is going to be, who fantasizes, whose fantasy are you and what do people fantasize about you? So this fantasy could even correspond with some of your own because we tend to kind of put out the energy. So pile number one is this beautiful, deep, mysterious shell cup. And I'm even going to, I'm drinking today for this reading, I'm drinking a milk oolong. I thought it seemed an appropriate beverage, so I'm gonna even have a little sip of my milk oolong. Delightful. So yeah, the shell cup is the first shell. The second shell is the fairy house shell. for those sea nymphs. I thought this looked like the cutest little sea nymph hut. And it's a very pretty oyster shell, I think. Some kind of a... Mm -hmm. So, sea nymph house shell. And the third one is this really cool... You could play it as a musical instrument, like castanet shell. They celebrate with extremely loud fireworks here. <laughs> so the castanet shell. I also use it to burn incense, to burn copal. Okay, so starting with the first shell, the enchanted seashell cup. Group number one, shell cup. Who fantasizes your Atlantean guides? 
your soul family, your star family, your earth friends and family, your elven family. During this beautiful Piscean season, we are asking, I'm going to have a little fun, who fantasizes about shell cup people, shell cup tantric travelers, who fantasizes about you, and what do they fantasize? Who fantasizes? Hmm. Okay. I'm right on. So we have the Hierophant and the Ace of Wands for who fantasizes about you. So the Hierophant also came out in, in the reverse. Um, so I think who fantasizes about you because the Hierophant's in reverse and Hierophant is kind of like leader boss energy. I think it's somebody, it can also be teacher energy, priest energy, but it's in reverse. So I think it's someone who is possibly younger than you, possibly a Taurus um, or a Sagittarius. And I think this person, um, you know, this person looks up to you in some way, is your student. And I'm also getting that this person is, yeah, male. Um, uh, yeah, you make this person really hot. It could almost be a fantasy like a, a, of a teacher, like a, a hot teacher type thing. Um, it could be like I'm getting a uh, sexy librarian. Um, I'm also getting, I'm really getting a hot teacher sort of thing. I'm getting like you pointing to something on a blackboard and you explaining, instructing, teaching. And also I'm getting that this person fantasizes about you about like a manual, um, a manual manipulation of their pleasure points. So I'm getting like, you know, this could be like using your fingers or your hand, um, you know, whether it's a masculine or feminine person, but I am getting kind of a masculine energy from this. Mm, yeah, I'm getting like a teaching and a manual you could even be teaching them how to do something with their hands, um, like a task or a skill that they are learning that is manual, but they fantasize about you. So that's interesting. And let's look, what else do I get from this? Yeah. I'm definitely getting that it's something to do with the hands. You're teaching them something to do with the hands and they are fantasizing about you doing something with your hands to them to pleasure them. And I'm going to look at the Loteria Americana. Oh my gosh, and look what just flew out. <laughs> There's some strong... a hand. <laughs> Interesting. Uh... Wow. Okay, yeah. So I'm getting definitely like there's an older person and a younger person here. There's a person with like authority as in a teaching authority. Um, clearly both adults, you know, clearly that's what we discuss here on this adult content channel. But this person, they want you to touch them because they, they your hands really turn them on. Um, and they also want to touch you. So the hand wants to go into the water vessel. You know what I mean? <laughs> Jelly bean. And I've also got the soldier here. So I feel like this person um, kind of wants to show you that that they would work hard for you, that they would follow your orders, that they would, without question, um, receive your instructions on how to pleasure you, and they would, um, they would ceaselessly follow your orders, because 
they are, you know, they feel that they could fulfill their duty to you. So there's, there's, this vibe always comes out in my sexy readings, but there's kind of, um, a little bit of a, a domination thing here. Um, I think this person just, they really admire and respect you and what you're teaching them and they want to, they want that to be expanded to the sensual realm. So you could even be experienced in, you know, in Tantra. You could be a Tantric teacher like Mary Magdalene and this um, counterpart could be one of your, one of your Tantric students in some context. I'm not saying that it has to go to the physical realm, you know, to to the sexual realm in that way, but in the realm of fantasy, this person is really thinking about following following some orders and fulfilling his or her duty to you. Okay? And your beautiful hands are inspiring them in their fantasy. So very interesting pile number one. Let's let's move on to Let's move on to pile number two. So this is the little water nymph, sea nymph house shell. Beautiful. It's kind of golden. Kind of looks like an eye as well, like a fish eye almost. Fish eye lens. So right away I'm even getting that this person could be interested in filming you or watching you. Um, like really the Piscean sort of escapist quality is really coming out for this pile and with the nymph you know the nymph sort of um, energy I said the sea nymph that that to me is like a nymph it also brings to mind nymphomaniac so this person could be a nymphomaniac um, you know they could be very very sexual and okay yeah okay so we've got the three of pentacles so I'm definitely getting um, that this person fantasizes about you in context of um, a threesome. So, yeah, the magic number three, which is which is a very Venusian Piscean kind of number as well. So the magic number three, they're thinking that this could be a really interesting triangle. Um, and then, in addition to that, the lovers came out in reverse, and you can see that there are three people here as well plus the angelic energy so yeah you know there is I feel like there is already um, kind of a, a threesome energy going on resonating in your life it could be like you and two friends that you know but one of these people um, and I'm getting a masculine energy because we also have the king of the king of Pentacles in reverse super hot like a dark-haired guy um, really earthy, I'm getting like tan skin, um, somebody who might even like work outside, somebody who could be in um, like construction or something, construction or farming or um, somebody who's work building close to the earth, a lot of green here, king of pentacles energy, but it's in reverse, they don't this is like, this is total fantasy. This is like outside of the material realm. Like they're having crazy fantasies about what they want to do with you and another person. Um, I'm getting like two guys and a girl. So I'm getting the dark haired guy, another guy with a beard maybe, and a girl. And the girl could, could be, um, you know, of a lighter complexion, so and as far as what are they fantasizing about doing hmm i think it's a very there could be some outdoor stuff going on in the sunshine um also, you could be in a relationship with one one of these people already, like in more of a romantic or sexual configuration, and they're fantasizing about bringing somebody else's energy in to watch and to film it. I'm definitely getting like a filming vibe, like setting up kind of, you know, like outside with lights and 
or making sure the lighting is right. Definitely, definitely three, though. And this person doesn't really want to be in charge of it. They kind of want to, you know, they don't want to be in a working or managing position in this. They want to be, they want to kind of be instructed or set up. They don't want to do the arranging on this. They just want it to happen. They want it to happen naturally in the true Piscean energy. Ooh, a little erotic movie time for you pile number two, you little nymphos. Okay, so now we'll look at the Loteria Americana and just see if anything else. So, can I have a little bit more on pile number two, sea nymph shell? Whose fantasy is pile number two, and what do they fantasize about? Whose fantasy is pile number two, and what do they fantasize about? Okay, I saw... Whoa, after all that chit-chat about trees, you have the tree. Yeah, this person definitely wants to get outside with you, um, under the shade of a tree in, like, an enchanted kind of isolated type place. And I also have the musician that came out in the reverse, El Musico. Yeah. Mm. I feel like, yeah, they almost want to want to kind of just come across it. They almost want to just, you know, fantasize it fantasize about it. Maybe that they're going for a hike and they come across it, but like the light is, is beautiful and natural and it's shady and away from other people. And it's just, yeah, it's just a beautiful kind of threesome, you know? So if one of the people is is a manager or a builder or a person, you know, a business owner. The other person is more of an artist or whatever. The uh, the other male, and and then the female is just very natural and more could even be, you know, the, the word nymph keeps coming up in there. I have heard the phrase forest nymph as well. So almost like an enchanted forest sort of scenario. But they think about filming it too, or maybe maybe they watch erotic film that has some of those elements in it. So, hmm, sexy, sexy, sexy. Okay, pile number two, that's your reading for Whose Fantasy Are You? And what are they fantasizing? Okay, and pile number three, Castanet Pile. This is like one of the coolest shells. It's two shells in one. Um, so yeah, we're asking today whose fantasy are you in Pisces season and what are they fantasizing about? Okay, okay. Let's shuffle up. Beautiful number three, Pisces. Whose fantasy is pile number three, Castanet shell? And what are they fantasizing? Whose fantasy is pile number three, Castanet? And what are they fantasizing? Okay, wow, we got the three of pentacles again. This came out in the last one. I'm gonna pull some more, shuffle in some more. So whose fantasy is pile number three? And what are they fantasizing? You might want to watch the second pile as well because this was the first card out in the second pile. Wheel of Fortune.
Okay, uh, I'm actually really, really strongly getting that this is somebody that you already know, that you have already had a relationship with. I'm getting that this is a male energy, so someone masculine, a masculine is fantasizing about you. We have this um, Three of Pentacles, Wheel of Fortune, Major Arcana, the Sun in Reverse, and the Nine of Swords, which is Mars in Pisces. So that's interesting, yeah. Um, definitely getting a masculine energy. This could be a karmic counterpart or somebody that you have a very strong soul connection with. And I think you've been with them before. And I think it didn't work out. <laughs> because I'm seeing the sun in reverse and I'm seeing... But this Wheel of Fortune is, you know, a very um, Saturnian energy. And it is showing that a karmic cycle could be complete. And this person is fantasizing about being with you again. I think you left a deep mark upon this person's soul and I think you know very well who this is. It's probably some sort of um, a tantric partner or a twin flame type soul counterpart. Um, yeah. They felt really happy and lucky to be with you but what they're saying now is that they their fantasy is a lot more um, you know, it's not as sexual, the energy that I'm getting right now, as somebody who's probably not having sex right now and thinking about you and how they really, really want to be with you again. And they want to collaborate with your energy, you know, on a very energetic level in order to bring this together. And they're, they're doing it by, by, you know, trying to stabilize their own energy field and pulling in the divine blueprint of both of your souls and trying to follow it. So this is really strong, strong energy, very masculine. Can I get some more information on this, please? The guides of pile number three. So even though pile number two did have that one card, um, I think that could, that relationship or those relationships with the three people could actually kind of be a distraction for you if you watch pile number two as well. Um, could be a distraction from the the very kind of, you know, um, innervating energies that come up with a soul counterpart relationship that hasn't fulfilled its potential yet. So, you know, I was talking about tantric counterparts, um, Yeshua Magdalena, you can think of it on electromagnetic terms if you're into physics, or you can think of it as, you know, Shiva Shakti if you're into that kind of um, spiritual system, or in the Egyptian spiritual system um, would be Isis or Aset and Osiris or Lassir. So we're talking like soul family, like the original electromagnetic charge that, you know, burst and expanded outwards and the two fish that used to be in in a symbiotic energetic relationship which have now kind of at least come under the influence or illusion that they're apart whereas in actual fact you know they're two halves of the same whole and I know this is discussed plenty in terms of the twin flame um, configuration but if it does apply to you at a soul level, at a heart level, if you know that this is part of um, what you're doing here on earth in this lifetime, then yeah, I think you're thinking about this, this person is thinking about it, and the Wheel of Fortune coming out upright is um, a good indication that the time is, has come around once more for you to possibly come into, um, yeah, and again you have the sun, so the sun came up first. So you have the sun, which is, you know, the masculine energy, and it came out in the tarot as well. It's not just the masculine energy, it's the star energy, so it's the expansive, you know, nuclear... It's the atomic energy of, of matter. So yeah, that's... This equation is asking to be completed, and in addition, you have the cantaro, which is showing the feminine energy that is 
is ready and is in receiving mode for the masculine energy. And you have in reverse, Larana or the frog. So this is about fertility and it's showing like healing, healing of the sexual energy. And you have El Musico in reverse, um, another healing position. So fifth dimension kind of energy. So when these when these energies come into balance, um, you know, and it could just be a timing thing with, with planetary alignments and what's going on with the photonic expansion that we are receiving now on earth, but it's asking, it's asking us to, you know, to, as well as pulling in the fifth dimensional portals and opening them from this end, it's, it's asking us to send up energy from the earth to help the earth release electromagnetic energy um, in order to more gracefully and easily receive this you know expansive photonic energy that's that, that we're receiving now on earth because of the position of our galaxy so anyway I went off on some kind of a weird Pisces tangent there but <laughs> Yes, your your soul counterpart is fantasizing about being with you again, and I think they're really thinking, you know, maybe they're taking some time to receive uh, to receive their own blessings, to understand their own essential energy, their configuration, and how it relates to you, and they're really feeling the call to be with a tantric partner right now. And that's you, my dear. So if you chose this pile, there could be, you know, a realignment of you and your soul counterpart that's coming in um, during the remainder of this Pisces season or whenever you happen to watch this this reading in this video. And yeah, that's, that's exciting. It's beautiful. So thank you very much, Tantric Travelers, and happy birthday, you little fishies. You little fishies, you little mermaids, you little prostitutes, you little fishermen, <laughs> you little forest nymphs. What else do we have? Oh, anybody who who loves the watery, the fluid. Anybody who loves a glass of tea, a glass of wine. Have a wonderful celebration of this beautiful, expansive fluid, unpredictable, non-linear cycle by Tantra Traveler.